Hi, my name is Liam Malloy. I'm a professor of economics at the University of Rhode Island. And I just wanted to create a short video on what I see as the potential macroeconomic effects of the current uh, coronavirus pandemic. Now, this is not going to be for you know, professional economists. This is um, for people that might be wondering you know, what's going to happen to the economy over the next month, two months, three months. Um, and one thing that I try to make sure every student that takes my Principles of Macroeconomics class remembers uh, is the really important fact that one person's spending is another person's income. And this is true no matter what you're spending on, right? Whether you're spending on restaurants or daycare, um, and that's going you know, indirectly to, into the worker's um, paychecks, or whether you're making rent and mortgage payments, which are going into either your landlord's income or into some uh, bank's income or investor's income. Um, same with student loan payments, right? And so when people stop spending, that's going to be a big problem for the economy, right? And of course, that's what's going on right now. So when we all stay at home, lots of spending falls, right? And so obviously, you know, for those of us who are consumers, we're going to be spending less. Um, we're going to be not going to the movies. We're not going to restaurants. Um, we're going to be spending a lot less. And then, of course, some of those businesses uh, are going to have to close, right? A lot of those businesses have already closed. Um, a lot more are closing. And that's going to mean that millions of people are going to become unemployed. On Thursday, we will find out how many people filed for unemployment benefits for the first time uh, last week. That's going to be a huge number. It will probably be a record setting number, um, very likely over a million. Um, and it's going to continue for a while, right? For at least as long as we are, we are all uh, staying at home. Um, there's nobody to blame for this, right? This is inevitable. Um, when we decide that we need to stay home, when we decide we need to practice social distancing, people are going to spend less, lots of people are going to become unemployed. Now, the additional problem is what economists call the multiplier effect, right? And with the multiplier, all of those millions of people who lost their job in that first round are gonna see their income fall. Uh, most of them will be eligible for unemployment benefits, but that's not going to replace all of their income. Um, so they're going to have to spend less. And that means that total spending is going to fall by even more than the initial amount, putting even more people out of work. Um, so this you know, first week that we see on Thursday about how many people are unemployed is going to be a very important number, but it's going to also be important to uh, see how many people lose their job uh, the week after that, and the week after that, and the week after that. Another thing that I think is important to remember um, that I try to you know, remind my students is that uh, the financial markets are not the real economy, right? The real economy is where people work, where people buy things, uh, where goods and services are produced. Um, the stock markets and bond markets uh, are not the real economy, but they are related to the real economy. And when income falls, right, and people can't pay their debts, so they can't pay their mortgage payments or their car payments or their student loan payments or their rent, uh, the financial system may be in trouble. Uh, and that's what we've seen. So we've seen the stock markets uh, fall. We've seen bond uh, prices rise, um, which means interest rates are very, very low. Um, and the economy needs the credit flowing through the banking and financial systems in order to function smoothly. And if it stops uh, flowing like it did uh, in 2008, then we can be in trouble. So unfortunately, uh, a recession is coming. There's no official definition of a recession. Um, often it's defined as GDP shrinking for two quarters in a row. Um, so we will see if that happens. I think it's very likely. Um, but there's going to be a sharp decrease in output and a sharp increase in the unemployed. Um, I've seen estimates of, you know, between four and 10 percent of GDP falling, which is a very large number. Um, we're going to see a big drop in consumer spending, especially in durables. Right. That's one of the things that consumers can push off. Uh, we're likely to see a big drop in both um, business investment as businesses pull back from potential investments. Uh, and residential investments um, because of the unemployment situation. So there isn't too much we can do about preventing a recession, but what can we do, right? So what can the government do? 
Well, there are two main tools that the federal government has. Um, one is monetary policy, though, so that's in the hands of the Federal Reserve Bank. Um, they can set short-term interest rates, and they also act as sort of a lender of last resort. So when uh, banks are not lending, um, or when other, um, you know, sort of shadow financial institutions are not lending, the Fed can step in. And then there's fiscal policy, which is in the hands of Congress and the president. And they control taxes, government spending, and transfers. Um, and the big difference between the federal government and state governments is that the federal government has the ability to borrow vast sums of money um, and still at the moment at very low interest rates. So let's think about monetary policy first. Um, the Federal Reserve has already cut its target interest rates basically to zero, um, back the same as they did in the financial crisis in 2008, 2009. Um, but it's not likely to have any effect, right? So it's not likely to increase residential investment, um, which is just building new houses or increase durable purchases um, like cars or washing machines or refrigerators. Uh, and it's very unlikely to have any effect on business investment. So that's probably not going to have a big effect. The Fed has made it clear that it's going to support financial markets around the world. Um, they made a statement last week. They made another statement uh, today, Monday, March 23rd. Um, that they're basically going to lend money to whoever needs it. Um, and that's going to help uh, put the financial markets uh, on a slightly more positive footing. But there isn't much more that the Fed can do at this point, right? There isn't much more that the Fed can do to increase consumer and business spending, uh, especially when we're all stuck at home. So what about fiscal policy? Well, so fiscal policy, we have taxes, we have government spending, and we have transfers. And right now, the uh, Congress and president are debating about what to do. There's talk of sending almost everyone $1,200. That would certainly help. Um, that would help people pay for necessities like rent and electricity and the internet. Um, but it's still not going to put consumer spending back where it was because we're still going to be stuck at home. Um, obviously, unemployment benefits are also a good start. But again, as I said, they don't replace all of your income um, if you got laid off. So even sending money to people is not going to bring um, total spending, aggregate spending back to where it needs to be to prevent a recession. What we really need right now <laughs> is big government, right? We need more leadership and less sort of uh economic management. And this is really, you know, you can think of um, as like World War II. I always remind my students, you know, the United States, uh, with the help of its allies, won World War II in three and a half years on both sides of the globe. And they did that um, by a concerted effort through federal government. There was rationing, there were price controls, they uh, had businesses uh, putting out uh, arms and ammunition. Um, Obviously, we don't need arms and ammunition now. Um, we may need some rationing, but um, that's probably not the biggest thing. What we need is we need to make sure there are tests uh, to test as many people uh, as possible, as quickly as possible. We need to trace um, those tests so that we can know who is infected and where um, they are. We need to make sure hospitals and other and healthcare workers have the protective gear, the beds, the equipment they need. We have to make sure that sick people are not going out and making other people sick. Um, and we also have to, you know, make sure that everybody who does get sick, you know, if they lose their job, they don't lose their health insurance. There's a big need for leadership from the federal government. And that that's going to be much more important than, uh, say, spending uh, money or sending transfer checks to uh, every American, which uh, still would be very useful. So in the medium run, say six months to a year, really depend on how quickly and effectively we contain this. If we contain it within two months and then everything goes back to normal, we'll have a sharp contraction and, and a pretty sharp recovery. Um, if it goes on for months and months, then things are going to get worse and worse, right? The unemployment rate is going to be high and is going to remain high, and we will have a fairly long and deep recession. Um, so the quicker we can get out of this, uh, the better it will be for everyone. In the long run, it really depends on how we respond to this crisis and really whether or not we take the lessons learned from this crisis and build the public health infrastructure 
um, in order to respond to the next um, pandemic, whether it's uh, another coronavirus or an avian flu virus or some bacteria, whatever it is, we need to be able to respond to these much more quickly. Um, it really is going to depend on how long people are out of work, right? How much income is lost, right? That spending is not going to happen. We're not going to get a war time uh, boost once this is over if people are losing their income. Um, so the faster we can recover from this, the better we will be in the long run. Now, that said, right, in the long run, what we think about in terms of the economy are the people we have with their you know, skills and expertise, the capital we have, and the technology we have. And we would expect in the long run to have basically the same uh, levels of people, capital, and technology. And so we should be able to recover, but a lot of it's going to uh, depend on how we respond. So, you know, I hope we can do better next time. Um, it's really going to depend on how well the federal government and state governments uh, learn the lesson from this crisis. And uh, we'll keep our fingers crossed.